Uh, let's go to Michelle. She is calling from Calgary, Canada. She listens to us online. Hi, Michelle. Hello. How are you today? Great. How could we help you? Um, I've been with my husband for 13 years. We've been to get married three. We have two kids, three and five. He, I know a lady earlier said, like, my husband's threatened divorce, separation, and and he's held it over me for a long time, and he's very controlling, manipulative, yeah. and at times abusive. And he did file for divorce, and I didn't know, and then he kept threatening me with the papers when he would get mad or upset. And I told him just to serve me if that's what he wanted, and then five days passed, and he did. But it was when I was on top of the world when I felt my best, and I was, mm-hmm. expect- and I was expecting that because I'd lost a lot of weight, and I've had mental illness. He has. There's s- bad financial problems. And then he said he'd file a discontinuation before Christmas, and he got what he wanted. We had a great Christmas. Um, he took my kids away to see his family. I wasn't allowed. I was excluded. He's Japanese, and he's an um, agnostic. I'm Christian. I have been since he and I were first together. Okay. I want to know how to save my marriage. Okay. All right. And so uh, you had a great Christmas, and then... Um, then he took the kids off by himself to the fa- to his parents. I insisted I went because it was a whole province away. He was upset with that. He wanted his space, but I went to see my family because I haven't been able to in two years. Okay, so uh, so the the status is what now that you guys took the trip together? And well, he's angry. He's mad. I came coming back because of before Christmas. I said I'd take one child. I mean, he's always angry. But whatever happens, nothing seems to please him. But he said now he's not going to file a discontinuation. Mm -hmm. And because earlier in September, because he failed to provide us with some basic, there's some times of necessities, and he saw that filing, and I didn't realize that he had seen it. And now Mm -hmm. he's angry, um, And but he's back and forth. It's been like that for a long time. Well, how would you feel if, if there isn't any advice on how to save your marriage? You're devastated. Yeah. Mm. Because, I mean, sometimes the person, if they're angry and distant and they're not interested and they're um, disconnected from you, I mean, there may not be a way. Uh, There's a way you can act and react that gives it the best chance. That's what I'm looking for. Best chance. Because we got home and all the reality of our life, finances and children and money, has hit him, and then all day coming back, he was fine. Yeah, so you maybe know, you did, need there, to give him more... And then more back sp- in the out of being angry. And so maybe you need to give him more space, as if you're not really interested right now in getting back with him. Okay. Maybe that would draw him to you. Mylon, Jill, what do you think? Well, you do live together, don't you? That's the thing. When we filed, or when he filed for divorce, he said we'd been separated since July, but we've still lived in the same home together, sharing everything about of a marriage he was just he felt hurt and angry right and he kept, so, kept, so so the point michelle i think steve is saying something that's very important you're married to an unbeliever who is not happy as an individual and he isn't sure whether he wants you and i don't know what the legal rights are in canada and in your province but i would I would make sure that I got legal help and advice on this. I wouldn't sit flat-footed. I would find out what your rights are. I know what they are. (laughs) Okay. Well, then I would say it's nice to think that I would like to keep my marriage together, but if he continues to insist that he does not want you as a spouse, um, I would not believe that you're going to be able to help fix that. But I think the other thing that's going on is, is he is also a person that, is anxious and hurt and upset inside and afraid and and he feels feels probably out of control control inside he's not Mm -hmm. able to perform Mm -hmm. certain you know functions of finance and 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 he sounds very overwhelmed Mm -hmm. you become a lightning from a very abusive home so did i Uh. and it's a very he just came home from that completely controlled abusive environment with his family yeah well and when you don't believe in god then it's all up to you yeah that's a huge burden so, so you may again, like Steve said, you may not be able to pull this thing off. But the best thing you can do is always be that that person that says, "I'll listen to your pain. I will not tolerate your abuse. I'll love you where you hurt, but you may not mistreat me." 
and then I would lean in and say, something scares you, something hurts, mm-hmm. and life feels like your home right now, doesn't it? And I would get and life in, feels like what? Life feels like your home His right home now. His home growing up. See, moving toward him with some empathy and and naming the things that are underneath all the behavior. Because I you already both, know that. Yes, to, you know that. But do you discuss them with him? But do you him? say it to him? See, it's not about you knowing. It's about the two of you connecting. And Because there's such a lack of trust here. And so you both are just taking a defensive posture and protecting That's yourselves. Right. And yeah. so that polarizes you. So you get out of the defensive mode, you give him his space, uh, you, you kind of back up a little bit, and maybe that draws him to you. It does, because then he told me to stop cooking, doing laundry, everything's for him. But it's mm-hmm. all about money. He doesn't want to spend money on a lawyer. And I got one, and then I did, and then I just completely ignored him, and then he sat down, he, he sat down with us at supper last night. Okay. But then so. this morning I made breakfast, and he was angry at it. <laughs> Mm. He's back to being overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, um, that's the that's the best we can do right now. Let me send you Mylan's book, How We Love. That's the best I can do for mm-hmm. you is to send that book to you, and I hope you'll read it. I think you'll understand a lot, and I think he will too, because uh, obviously he came from a very chaotic background, and uh, this is going to give you some insight there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the more chaotic your childhood, the more chaotic your adulthood. And you have to be willing to work on the history in order to right. solve the present. Yep. 